as street photographers, we see beauty all around us. But you may be feeling like a lot of your images kind of feel the same and you want to spice it up a little bit. Or maybe you want to push yourself creatively and you want to try something new. And so with this in mind, here is a variety of different ways how we can go out and shoot street photography. I'm going to be doing all of this on the flattest focal length, the 35mm on my Fuji X100V, to show you that it's not about your kit, it's all about what's up in here. One of the ways how we can start to add variety to our street photography is to try and tell different parts of the story. So we can focus on introducing the location, and these are known as wide shots. And this is where we are capturing the wider environment that we're in. And this is great for setting the scene in a sequence of images. We can also start shooting people's stories. And these images are typically known as mitts. And this is where our subject and what they're up to, that's the visual interest. And that takes up the vast proportion of the frame. And finally, we've got details. And these are the, the things that our subjects and people interact with. And this really helps to add texture to any of the stories that we're telling. If you're struggling to make your photos feel immersive, we can add depth to our images to help them feel a bit more real because images are just 2D renders of a 3D world. But as photographers, there's certain techniques that we can use to make these 2D images feel more 3D. And most people think that the easiest way to add depth is to use a wide aperture or a low f-stop, but that isn't the most powerful technique. In the simplest way, a general rule is to have your subject closer to the camera sensor than the subject is to your background. And this is going to really create separation between your subject and its background. And the more extreme this difference is between your subject and the background compared to your subject and your camera sensor, the greater depth will be created in your images. And to take this one step further, we can start to add what is known as foreground elements. And these are things between our subject and the camera sensor. These often don't have very much visual weight, so they're not very distracting, but they are a great way to add another layer of depth. And by having foreground, our subject and the background, we then have three different focal planes, and this really helps us create depth, which then makes our photos feel immersive and 3D. Another way for us to add variety to our shots is to use differing shutter speeds. And so typically, most of us like to use a fast shutter speed, which is fantastic for capturing an interesting moment as it's happening, so we can then analyze it later. However, an underutilized technique is using a slower shutter speed, and this allows us to create images with movement. And more precisely, it allows us to communicate our subject's relative speed to its environment. If we turn at the same relative speed as our subject whilst using a slow shutter speed, like 1 over 30, we are then able to create a blurry background and also create directional lines within this background, which then suggests movement, and in particular, the direction of movement. We mentioned moments earlier, and there are two different types of moments in photography. The first one is this example here, where we have found a composition that we like, and in this example, we've got this bridge leading off into the right, with the sun bursting back through. And I think that if I can place a subject up here where this couple is right now, this will make a really nice composition. And so I'm waiting for the right subject to come into my frame. And hang on. <laughs> I think that this would look really nice if we've got a subject that we can anchor to the left-hand side of the frame. And so up here in the railings, there's a little gap, and I want to try and place a subject perfectly between those two. And so, we are going to wait for a subject to come into the frame. Other times, you'll see a moment developing in front of you, and you have to react to that. You have to move in order to capture it in the way that you think is best going to capture this story. Sometimes a story is better told from someone else's perspective. And a great way that we can do this is we can put our camera right in front of someone as they are interacting with something in front of them. And that way we are always personifying and imagining ourselves as the object. But the slightly easier, less confrontational way is to shoot over someone's shoulder. So instead of being the object, we are now the person interacting with the object. And this really allows the viewer of the image to feel like it is them interacting with whatever the photos of. I wish my voice didn't fucking break then. <laughs> Sorry, it's retelling. Really